a lot of people operate under the assumption that if you know somebody's personality type, you can predict how they're going to act or respond to different situations, right? If you know type well enough, if you know psychology well enough, people become predictable and easy to understand and their behavior becomes almost stereotypical and shallow and yeah, predictable and boring, right? Today I'm going to challenge that assumption. Today we're going to be challenging that assumption and to challenge that assumption, I've decided to throw a workshop. I booked this event space and I'm going to be setting it up for an interesting experiment for people to figure out who they are depending on what situation they are in. The goal of this workshop is to prove that people tend to act differently depending on situation and context and that personality types don't always operate under the same assumptions and under the same situation and context, right? Now, a question is, how do you facilitate a discussion to get people to think about who they are in different situations? Well, I thought of some questions and I wrote them down here on post-it notes. And I'm going to do something evil. I'm going to hide the post-it notes across the room. So people will have to search for these questions uh, under different nooks and crannies, under the table and in different locations. And when they find them, they can write down the answers on their own personal notepad. So they can take that with them home afterwards as well. The questions I'm asking is to understand how they act when they are in a state of flow, under stress and under anxiety and when they are bored, right? So questions I might ask is like, under stress, I become more cold and argumentative or I become more emotional. I also might ask, I find it boring to settle on a plan or to keep on discussing, right? So these are all questions to get you to think about how you are when you are stressed, anxious, in flow or when you're bored, right? So what are your normal go-to habits in these kind of situations and contexts? I just realized I need to go out and get more colored paper and stickers. So yeah, let's go. Uh, so we just did a workshop to try to figure out what personality you have in different situations, right? Did you learn anything from uh, this workshop? Yes, indeed. It was. Uh, it has been so far a very interesting workshop. Yeah, I, d I hadn't think before before coming here that you know some of the uh, characteristics of, of of my personality and so on can be so easily identified and you know be classed into a category. So that that was really interesting for me. I mean, uh, for example, the fact that uh, I tend to be more creative under stress or the fact that I want my house to be more, you know, with flowers and cozy instead of uh, modern and clean or the fact that, um, uh, yeah, so this, this sort of stuff, I found it really interesting, you know, to, to see that uh, they can be identified to other people as well and not myself being uh, kind of, uh, you know, kind of unique or isolated from uh, from other people. I'm identified with an INFPT. Right, yeah. so the turbulent introvert. Uh, turbulent uh, introvert. Intuitive, uh, intuitive feeling. feeling and perceiving. Right. In my, like, uh, default state, I'm very turbulent. I'm uh, always questioning myself. Uh, I'm really, um, I'm reflecting a lot of how, uh, uh, on myself, on my on inner compass, you know. Uh, and when I'm excited or I'm comfortable or I'm in a sphere around people that I feel comfortable with, then I tend to go full assertive. And then I'm, uh, I just jump into this INFPA mode and then I, uh, I talk a lot more, I'm more extroverted and uh, I just get more energy from a group. How do you like, uh, I recently uh, started changing uh, up my own personality test. So when you're on Personaltopia, uh, you take my personal test. Instead of assertive and turbulent, I tend to say assertive and modest. So uh, I tend to say that turbulent people, while they can be turbulent and neurotic for sure, for sure they are also more inclined to be modest. And I noticed that that's actually a positive thing, right? So to be able to question yourself and learn new things and change your mind, like those are all like important qualities. How do you feel about that? I, I think it's a, it's a better terminology, modesty. Uh, than assertiveness and, and turbulence. So um, modesty is something that resonates with me because I tend to search for modesty in other people. Mm. So um, 
I, I know as a fact for myself that uh, when somebody else is modest, like a new person, I meet a new person and, and he or she is modest, then I automatically more li- are more likely to like that person. So I think it's... Um, I, I think it's a better terminology, yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, philosopher Lao Tzu, he said that, uh, you know, about the modest people, he said that uh, all waters, uh, all rivers flood to the lowest point, in a sense. So I think often when we are around people that are more modest, and I think of, you know, the Hobbit from Lord of the Rings and things like that, everyone around them feels stronger and more empowered, you know. And also, like, it, these people, they lift other people up. So while assertive and confident people can be more competitive and put themselves forward, by doing so, they often to put other people down a bit, right? So when you allow yourself to stay back, what I notice is people become stronger around you and feel better and they like hanging out with you because of that as well. Yeah, no, That's definitely true. I yeah. think, uh, I, yeah, I, I agree with that uh, 100%. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Did you learn anything today? Uh, yeah, I learned a lot. Um, I think... Um, it's it's it gives new insight into the whole uh, rigid um, like boxes of the sixteen personalities that tend to make up the MBTI uh, uh, test, um, and to see that it can be a, a range and that you can switch from personalities in different situations. I think it's it's very insightful, and it helps um, it helps in dealing with different situations. I think. So would you, how would you say you're different depending on when you're at work and when you are just doing something for fun by yourself? Yeah, you know, I, we discussed that also in uh, in uh, the team discussion that I've had before. And uh, for me, it has been really a challenge because uh, during work, I have developed this uh, characteristic that uh, I'm taking uh, decisions based on rational thinking. I t- tend to be, you know, uh, thinking in a very uh, rational manner, which in um, relationships with other people in the social life, this does not, does not work like this. Right, so you feel in your social life you have to be more feeling maybe and more emotion oriented, but in work you can allow yourself to be more, a bit ruthless, more logical, more cold. You know, exactly, right? exactly. This yeah. is a very, very correct way to put it. It was interesting with the different questions thinking about how the situation affects my response you know um but i would say in general my answers align with the entj uh, i guess personality type and how i've heard it described yeah yes especially to the introverted part i don't know that's one that i go back and forth on a lot because of these personality tests when i take them i come out as very extroverted um from the tests i don't always feel that way you know um, especially now I only moved to Amsterdam less than three weeks ago. Um, so I feel like moving to a new city makes me feel particularly or more introverted than normal where, you know, of course you don't have the same connections. You don't have the same uh, people calling, Hey, you know, let's hang out, um, as you normally do. You can be an extrovert in certain situations and you can be introverted in other situations. So it's completely normal that perhaps, perhaps you're in social situations that you're more, uh, you like discussions, you like arguments, like in a playful way, you like uh, discussing ideas and things like that. But that when you're by yourself, uh, then you can be more like self-reflective, more connected to your emotions, more like uh, private in how you think about and introspect and think about things, right? Uh, I um, go away from my emotions. That's a bit also my uh, struggle. Like, I don't like to really think because I think, like, it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't want to, sp- I don't prefer to spend a lot of time thinking because I think it will make me crazy. It will make me crazy. So, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I like to uh, also always be, like, um, busy. <laughs> I'm investing more in that because I really want to, um, I mean, I, I want to understand my thoughts more. Like, I know it's a bit, uh, it was in my mind that it's scary and I'm, I want to try that, yeah. you know. <laughs> Where are you both from, by the way? Uh, actually, I'm from Lebanon, Beirut. And uh, I'm from Chicago, uh, US, and um, I feel kind of very similarly, I think. Um, and how I think about it when I'm by myself 
and, and thinking about certain things, it feels very circular, you know? It feels like I don't actually learn how to move past things or through things until I express them, whether that's talking to people or writing about it. So it sounds a little bit different, but maybe similar where sometimes I'll just, and maybe it's an extroverted thing where I'm not super comfortable being myself, or maybe as you're describing, maybe there's some like, uh, some moment of tension where I feel like this is useless, I'm just going in circles. And then if I push through that, then maybe there's more value there. Um, so I don't know, that's an interesting, when you said that, I thought, okay, maybe I can carve out more time to like be by myself and work through those thoughts. And <laughs> But just so often it, it will feel like I'm just going in circles or it's not helping and then I'll be like, this is, I want to do something else. I want to do something more fun or more productive or whatever it is. Um, did you learn anything today, by the way, if you didn't know before? Um, y yeah. Um, you know, what situations make me feel flow and make me feel, um, yeah, more more confident and more like I'm getting something out of life and more motivated. Um, and so personally, that made me think to trying to make, you know, environments where there's a lot of inputs and trying to make sense of that. I really enjoy and find that motivating. Uh, and that applies to a lot of different things. For example, team sports has always been like, just I love them. Like, doesn't matter what sport. If there's a group of people and you have a task and you're moving around, I just love it. Like trying to figure it out, trying to find my own place in that within the team. Um, I feel like that's kind of related where it's a dynamic environment, but I'm trying to make sense of it. Um, so yeah, I, don't, I, I think I had inclinations of these things before, but uh, just having it kind of crystallize in certain ways based on the questions is, is helpful. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, me, um, I loved a lot the questions because it was um, um, it was really putting uh, the point on some like uh, some thoughts that I had. Like uh, it's it's making me uh, think more about uh, about about my character, my personality, and it's uh, it's giving me it gave me a bit of guidance where, where to start. Actually, I, I really like the. The questions that opened up my mind a bit about uh, many things. With today, I saw more than ever that people's personality is situation and context dependent. When we take personality tests online, they ask us if we are more introverted or more extroverted, but they don't ask us in what situations we are more introverted and in what situations we tend to be more extroverted. What I found there today was that people process different situations and contexts differently. That means that when some people go into flow, they become more slow and zen. When other people go into flow, they become more active and dynamic. And so we are different in how we manage and experience different emotional states and in how we experience stress and how we manage anxiety. So we need to build smarter personality tests, personality tests which track for how we act when we are anxious, when we are stressed, when we are in flow, and when we are in a state of boredom, for example, or autopilot. Knowing all of these things and knowing that we are different with friends and family than who we are at work and who we are privately, people's personality types become quite multifaceted and complex. Once again, I'm seeing the same thing, and that is that we are very multifaceted people and we can't be easily predicted. We can't just assume how people will act or how they will manage different situations. Everyone has learned to manage situations differently and with time, age and maturity, we evolve and we learn new strategies, better ways to manage things. My gosh, I am beat. Is three hours of social exercise really all I can handle these days? Feels like it. Oh my gosh. Well, I had a ton of fun and it was so cool to see everyone's uh, answers and how much everyone wrote. One way I've designed my meetups uh, to be friendly for introverts is I've set it up so that people are prompted to write and to walk around and to mingle in small groups instead of large group discussions. It allows people to become and engage in things more personally. It might be hard to share your experiences with a large group, but in small groups it's quite a lot easier. 
So I found that a lot of people respond really well to that, but I'm definitely beat and I can't wait to turn off these lights. This was a really fun experiment and workshop for me and I'm looking forward to doing more things in Amsterdam. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe and let me know your thoughts down below. Does your personal type change depending on whether you are in a state of flow or stress and in what way does your personal type move depending on what situation you are in?